Dear students, welcome to another day's lecture in Elements of Machine Design. Uh, today, uh, let us discuss about this uh, eccentric loading when it is acting parallel to the axis of the bolts. Now here, there is a bracket here. It is uh, shown in two views. Uh, in front view and side view. You see, it has a rectangular base and it is bolted to a wall by means of four bolts. See, uh, if you this, take this as front view, you see, it looks like this in the front view and uh, in the side view, it looks like this. So, at this place, there are two, one in the front and one behind and this, the, this place, two one in the front and one behind like that there are four bolts see what is a bracket you see if you uh, you know if you go out to google and see you you need you see so many types of brackets okay i will show you just a moment you see when you see these, these are all, you know, shown as brackets. Are you seeing? You know, these are different types of brackets. And, uh, you know, there can be shaft brackets also like this. And uh, like these things. Okay. And then like this. You see, these are all... Um, all brackets only. I'm showing so that you know at least you may have an idea what is a bracket. You see, these are all brackets. Okay. So, coming back to our problem, brackets. See, here now. Now you see. In one view, it is um, uh, appearing symmetric. The other view, it is not symmetric. You see, it is uh, tilted towards one side and a load is applied at a distance. It is not, you see, if, if you take the center of it, centroid of it, it may come like this for the base. So the load is not applied on this line. It is applied to a side. So when it is applied to a side, then only it is called as eccentric loading. Okay. Now what what we are expected to is you see if we are uh, having four bolts here, what should be the size of those four bolts? So what should we do? You see if this load is here, you see come from this load. No, you see some bolts are two bolts are nearer and two bolts are further away. Okay. So let us consider what types of loads come on it and what types of stresses come on it and what should be the size of these bolts. You see now when we are designing uh, whether they are near or far all bolts will be of same size because of interchangeability we will use only same bolts. So you have to find out the diameter of the bolts. Okay. Uh, now come let us see. Uh, each bolt is subjected to direct tensile load. You see, first no is when because of this load, you see, this entire thing is being pulled down. This entire base is being pulled. That means there are four bolts, means all the four bolts will be pulled down. So if total weight is W, if somebody is hanging uh, uh, from this point, just you know, he is holding with the hand and you know. Uh, it's hanging from there so his weight no will be shared by all the four bolts okay so if w is, is is the load and there are four bolts or n number of four bolts so each direct load direct load upon each bolt will be total load divided by the number of bolts so this is the direct load and uh, and this we call as uh, direct tensile load okay now next now due to this W the bracket 
tends to rotate about an edge. You see, again we will come to our figure. In this figure, you see, what is it trying to do? You see, if this is AA. Oh, he has shown this as AA. No, no, no. This is not AA. This should be AA. Because if you are pulling it like this, what about this point it is trying to rotate clockwise direction? Are you seeing? About this AA, this is which is the vertical here. This is by mistake. Huh? Please uh, understand that everything that is written in the book is not correct. Sometimes they make mistakes. See, this is edge AA. See, it is trying to rotate about edge AA. Okay. So, now, now what we are saying is, due to this W, bracket tends to rotate the, about that edge AA. Each bolt is subjected to uh, a stretch by an amount that depends upon the distance from the tilting edge. The stress in each bolt is different due to different load experience on each bolt. That means, you see, from this tilting uh, edge, this tilting edge AA, you see, some are nearer and some are further away. Okay. So, because of this, no, this one, because of the distance, no, the, it may experience more load. This one, because it is close to the edge, it may experience uh, lesser load. So, therefore, now, uh, now let us see, let W be the load in a bolt per unit distance due to turning effect of the bracket. Now what, because of this W, what is happening? This is about trying to turn it. So, we don't know how much distance this is. We are calling it L1. This is L2. See, as if you, you know, think a little, as you move away from this towards this side, what will happen? The further the distance, the more load will come. So, suppose for every unit distance, unit distance means it can be 1 millimeter, 1 centimeter or whatever. For unit distance, per unit distance, the load coming on the bracket, uh, let it be called small w. And w1 and w2 be the loads on bolts at distances L1 and L2, capital L1, capital L2 from the tilting edge. You see capital L1, capital L2 are these things. Okay, here what load, what uh, uh, load is coming on this bolt is capital W1. Here what W load is coming on this bolt is capital W2. Okay, and now load on each bolt, load on each bolt will be, this W1 will be, see distance into small w. Small w is the distance per unit distance, yeah, load per unit distance. Okay. Similarly, capital W will be W into L2. Now, the moment of load W1 about the tilting edge will be M1 is equal to W1 into L1. But uh, we know this W1 is this, small w into L1. So, if you substitute, you will get W into L1 square. Similarly, for M2 also, you will have M2 is equal to WL2 and uh, finally it will be small w into L2 square. Like these two equations you have got. Now, now the total moment, total moment of load about the tilting edge, that is M1 plus L, M2. So the uh, summation of these two, you will get like this. So the, as two bolts, each are at distance L1 and a distance L2. Here there are two, here there are two. So the moment of the load W at distance L about tilting edge will be that will be M into W into L. Okay. That is this load. 
this W into total L. L is from the tilting, it's the application of load. Okay. So now on one side you have WL, which is because of the load that is coming, uh, and uh, on the other side you will have uh, this because of the um, because of uh, the uh, the moments that are uh, coming that are experienced by the bolts. So you can equate these two equations, this equation and this equation. Okay. Yeah. So now you will get from this. Okay, you take W down out here. It will come like this. So finally, you will get small W relation. The small W is capital W L upon two into L one square plus L two square. Okay. So now the bolt which are situated at L2 from the tilting edge are subjected to is subjected to greater load. Okay, so there no WT2 or you know T2 means you know first is direct load and th this load is because see WT1 is direct load WT2 is the tilting load the tilting load is W into L2. So this you will get as W W into L into L2 upon this. Okay. Now the total tensile load on most heavily loaded bolt. Now what is the most heavily loaded bolt? Where is the most heavily loaded bolt? This one, not this. So we are going to design this only. Okay. So because you know where maximum load comes there only it can fail so if you design here you know other smaller loads is it can easily bear okay so now we are going to design this and uh, that the tensile load the total tensile load uh, will be wt1 plus wt2 now, as bolts are subjected to tensile stress, ultimately both of them are trying to create a tensile stress only. So, tensile stress is equal to WT upon cross-sectional area of the bolt. The cross-sectional area is pi by 4 dc square. So, from this equation, you can find out the core diameter dc. Once you find out the core diameter dc, what you can do is you can find out uh, uh, nominal diameter d also and pitch also. Okay, this is one type of problem. Now, another type of problem, okay, another type, how it will be, this is the, um, the, this is the eccentric load when it is perpendicular to the axis of the bolt. Okay, I will make it a little, uh, yeah. Now you see, now here, oh, this, okay, here is a bracket now. Here the bracket is there and now uh, the bolts are here, okay. And this what you are seeing in the side view is looking like this, okay. And uh, W is acting here. So now you see the because of this W, uh, where it will be tilting? See, it will be tilting about this edge okay about this edge this edge from this edge this distance is l1 yeah in this figure again they have shown l1 from here that should have been from here because it is not it will not be tilting at this edge it will be tilting about this edge so this distance is l1 and from here to here this is l2 now you see when it is trying to what will make uh, see what will happen is uh, the bolts that are here will experience lesser load and bolts here will be experiencing more load so well, when we are designing we have to design for bolts here okay now because of this w 
W. What will happen? You see, eccentric load perpendicular to the axis of the um, bolts is this figure. You see, this is axis and this load is perpendicular. In the first thing, it was parallel. Okay, now, bolts are subjected to direct shearing load. Here, shear is there. Whereas, in the first case, both were tensile loads. Okay, which are equally sheared by, you see, here, shearing load is W by N. N is the number of bolts. Here, it can be 4. In some other case, it can be 3. It can be 2, 5, 6, how many ever it is. Okay, shearing load is W by N. Okay, then next, the eccentric load W will try to tilt the bracket in clockwise direction about the tilting edge BB. Now, did they show BB? Uh, here they are showing BB. Actually, this is not BB. This should be BB. Here, this is BB. This one. Okay, so that is the edge about which it will be rotating. Okay, the maximum tensile load will act, will on, on uh, uh, bolts at a position 3 and 4 that position 3 and 4 are here this is 3 4 this is 1 2 so here what load is that will be maximum so what is the load that is coming here again let w be the load in the bolt per unit distance due to turning effect of the bracket so due to turning of the effect of the bracket you see uh, small w small w is per unit distance this per, per, per unit distance is w into l1 only okay then the moment about this uh, tilting edge will be uh, of this load about the tilting edge will be m1 is wt1 into l1 so this is w into l1 square you will get okay then two bolts are at a distance l1 so two bolts are there so you have to multiply by two okay like that similarly w2 be the uh, ca uh, capital w2 be the tensile load on each bolt at distance l2 so for that again m2 will be this hmm. okay then two bolts as two bolts are at distance l2 then m2 total uh, moment uh, will be two times of uh, what you got here so the total uh, moment about tilting edge will be m is equal to m1 plus m2 this is uh, 2 into w l1 square plus 2 into w l2 square so you will get this equation again the total the moment uh, because of this load initial load w is w into l so now you can equate these two so now if we are equating this two, this is W into L and this will be 2 into W into L1 square plus L2 square. So you will get this W. So is this W any different from the previous W, small W in the previous mm, problem? In the previous problem, what W you got? Small W, where did you get? Uh, this is 2 into capital WL upon 2 into L1 square plus L2 square. Here, I think here it is the same thing. Okay, is it not the same thing? One minute, I have gone much. Huh? Oh my. Uh, here also it is the same thing. You see whether it is parallel or perpendicular the load to the axis of the bolts. You know, this W is coming same. Okay. Then the maximum tensile load will be at bolt 3 and uh, 4 which are situated at distance L2. So there, you know, this WT2 will be small w into L2. So small w is this and uh, L2 you substitute. And then what you have to do is you have to get the uh, bolts as bolts are. Uh, uh, okay, this is the tensile. This is a tensile load. And the initial one is shear shear load. So now what is happening? Now you, you because one is a sigma load, one is tau load. Okay, that is one causes sigma stress, another causes tau stress. What you have to find out is you have to find out the principal stresses or principal loads. Now this is a principal load. It is just like this principal stresses. Only sigma is uh, uh, replaced by W here. That's all. See, sigma t is equal to half of sigma t plus square root of sigma plus. Similarly, tau 
is equal to half of square root of uh, sigma square uh, did we miss a square here yeah in this place it should be square because it is uh, one is missing here okay plus 4 tau square so where tau is there capital w s where uh, sigma is there capital w t 2 you know you replace so you will get principal loads okay then by knowing equivalent load the core diameter dc of the bolt is obtained now if you if you uh, you know if you know see if this is the tensile stress tens, uh, tensile load now we you know the sigma sigma t is equal to load upon area this is load okay load upon area area is pi by 4 dc square only so from that you can find out dc you can from, find get one dc from here you can get another dc here so um, uh, by uh, knowing these equivalent loads this is equivalent tensile load this is equivalent shear load so you can get two dcs and whichever is the greater that value will be will be the uh, designed uh, size of the bolt okay like that you know these two problems can be solved now let us come to welded joints you know welding is the process of joining two similar metals sometimes dissimilar metals also uh, by heating with or without application of pressure and filler materials sometimes filler material will be there sometimes filler materials will not be there sometimes with pressure sometimes without pressure sometimes similar metals sometimes dissimilar metals you know welding can be joined or okay. with the welding you can join these things welded joint can be used as an alternative to riveted joints bolted joints okay now what are the advantages of welded joints you see, uh, now we have not seen the numerical problems for the eccentric loading. Uh, that we will see, um, you know, after, the, uh, okay, in, the, in tomorrow's uh, lecture, we will see. Okay, now let us go through this. Now, what are the advantages of welded joints? The welded structures are usually lighter than the riveted structures because in welding, gussets and other connecting components are not used you see they now this uh, he is comparing with the riveted joints when the riv riveted joints uh, you see uh, the weight will be more and uh, welded joints weight will be less okay welded joints provide maximum efficiency which is not possible by a riveted joint the efficiency of welded joints is more then alteration and addition can be easily made in the existing structure in the in the welding no you can easily uh, do changes you can add you can subtract but you know it is difficult in the case of riveted joint it is smooth in appearance because um, uh, there are no rivet heads and other things so it looks uh, pleasing in welded connection the tension members are not weakened as in the case of riveted joints see for making rivets you are making a hole thereby that the entire joint is becoming weak whereas in welded joint there is no hole uh, so it is uh, not weakened the welded joint has greater strength often a welded joint has the strength of the parent metal itself yeah sometimes no if it, skillful welders are welding it then what happens the metal you know welded place also in the welded place also it will be as strong as the parent metal the parent metal means that metal uh, where welding is not done the, that means the adjacent uh, metal metal pieces how what strength they are having even in the weldment also you will have such a strength okay that is a very desirable thing okay circular shape member are difficult to rivet see rivets you no know, for riveting only flat things are necessary but here you no know, rivets can um, uh, weld uh, the welding can uh, be done for even circular shape and any shape you know welding can be done the welding provides very rigid joints this is in line with the modern trend of providing frames any type of frame you know you need not bother for welding uh, for riveting no so many botherations will be there no, it is not easy. Uh, whereas here, welding is very easy. Welding is possible at any point, any place for riveting. 
oh required enough uh, clearance and everything should be there you see welding you know in the least possible place also you can weld you can go to the site and weld anywhere you can weld whereas for riveting so many other botherations are there welding requires less time compared to riveting this is another advantage now there are some disadvantages what are the disadvantages due to uneven heating cooling uh during the fabrication therefore members get distorted yeah if you see when you are heating heating or the welding may be 2000 degrees centigrade so therefore the other uh, the, you know uh, where welding is not done at a distant place on that uh, you know steel sheet you know the it will be room temperature here 2000 degrees centigrade because of this what happens is you know the the plate you no know, can be twisted it can be distorted okay and additional stresses may develop okay highly skilled labor will be required supervision will be required and due to uneven contraction expansion in the frame there are possibilities of cracks also okay the inspection of weld is difficult than the riveting joint okay the inspection also it is uh, not easy so these are some disadvantages now let us see types of weld type weld can welded joints types of welded joints now welded joints can be two types one is lab joint and fillet uh, butt joint lab joint and butt joint lab joint they are also calling as fillet joint so these are some of the things you know in in, in machine drawing you have you must have uh, drawn the um, drawn the uh symbols of welding and uh, other things okay now let us look from the design point of view types of fillet weld you see single traverse weld you see if one plate is up and another plate is uh, one plate it is down another plate is up like this you are welding here okay and uh, such a thing is called a single traverse you see in the in the front view it looks like this in the top view it is like this so you have welded here so you are not welded in this place so if you are welding only here then it is called as single traverse if you are welding in two sides then it is called as double traverse traverse okay traverse weld then fill then parallel welds parallel fillet welds and see if the plate is like this uh, instead of welding here you are welding here and here parallel to the application of the load okay then this is called as see lap these are all you know what are we seeing these are lap lap joints lap joint means what one above the other then is an overlap these are lap joints this is parallel okay are you seeing so in the front view it will look like this then butt joints butt joint is obtained by placing the plate edge to edge placing the plates edge to edge in butt welds the plate edges do not require to be beveling is he he um, okay in butt welds the plate edges do not require beveling if the thickness of the plate is less than 5 mm you see there here in the lap thing no lap uh, joints there is no no need of any beveling and other things but in butt joints in some of the places you have to do beveling beveling means what edge preparation you have to do you may have to you know prepare the edge you may have to uh make it inclined at an angle or something like that but uh, but if the plate thickness is less than 5 mm you no need of beveling but if the plate thickness is more than 5 to 12.5 mm thickness edges should be beveled that means they should be brought to v groove or u groove uh, like that okay so uh weld all round As, as, see there is a question here in which is asked in msbt exam draw symbolic representation of the following types of welds weld all round double v butt joint you know like this one one mark you may get okay uh, so the symbols you know these are the symbols you know which are which you have studied in uh, in um, what is this mechanical working drawing uh, which okay so see this is the square butt weld is it just like this uh, bring the two plates together and weld it here so this is uh, shown this is the symbol this is the symbol this is the representation the representation sectional representation is like this symbol is like this okay so uh, th this is the single v belt see the edges are beveled this is called a beveling of the edges so this is v uh, and the symbol is v and on the top like this 
okay this is the, uh, and then this is the single u but you see they will make it like this it appears like u okay and the symbol also is like this and uh, this is the w uh, double v and this is the w but weld and this is the all round weld they were asking here now what is the all round weld symbol and what is the double v but symbol double v but symbol is this all round is this this is not all round all round no this uh, representation is wrong they should have shown one plate and one something standing on it like uh, and uh, you know welding all around it okay this uh, representation is wrong you look for some other figure this is not correct okay then uh, other types of welded joints are and this is the corner joint uh, the, okay this is the fillet joint uh, edge or uh, seal joint you see two plates are like this here on the edge uh, beading you are doing then uh, t-joint like this okay like that, like that there are so many kinds of joints okay now let us come to uh, strength of the transverse fillet welded joint okay strength of the transverse fillet welded joint now if you have welded like this what is the strength of this uh, welding see it is not simply sufficient just to weld and go you see if you are simply welding and you know you are doing the work then you are simply at the level of a worker you know not no th mathematics involved here no uh, no thought about the loads about the stresses but as a designer when you see you should be able to estimate on the paper what will be the strength of those uh, plates of the weld and how much welding should be done so that it will never fail okay that is why we are doing the uh, you know we are studying as engineers you know the mathematics behind it so suppose these plates uh, you know this uh, length is uh, okay this uh, lw and, uh, and now this height you no know, this is sw you see this is the this is also yes this is also yes you know how much ever is this height here that much only on this side your welding will be coming okay like this single traverse and this is the double traverse fillet weld so first for analyzing the stresses stress analysis it is assumed that the section of the fillet weld is an isosceles triangle triangled isosceles right angle triangle now this is isosceles triangle why because this side and this side are equal and there is a right angle involved so this is an isosceles isosceles means two sides equal okay uh, the length of each uh, side each equal side is known as the size of the weld that is the reason why we have denoted this as with the symbol s this is the size of the weld and this uh, we are showing as L because it's the length of the weld. Okay. Yes. Okay. Size of the weld. And the R, the leg side. Leg also sometimes they call it. Okay. It is size of the weld as W. And the perpendicular distance or the hypotenuse from the intersection of the legs is known as weld throat. And it is the... Um, known as it is known as it is known as weld throat thickness t you see here in this figure now they have enlarged and shown okay now you call this a b this is b c and this is d now this b d will be the throat thickness t throat 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 mm -hmm. so this is t and this is a reinforcement above okay but uh, for calculations we will be taking only this much so this is the strength this is the side of the weld and this is the throat thickness t okay on the on these are the things that we will be using okay the cross sectional area of the weld is a minimum at the throat which is located at 45 degrees to the leg you see now you see from this point b 
a is a little distance and as you come closer 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 uh, the distance now this distance will be becoming less and this is the least distance and if you go further away from, from d to c again the distance will be increasing so this is the minimum thickness of this weld and this is where if uh, break, it breaks, it may break here because it um, cracks at the minimum area. It fails at the minimum area. Uh, all design we are doing all along that anything fails means where wherever it is weakest. Weak, where it will be weak, where is, there is a minimum area. So the minimum area of the throat is considered for design because the stress is maximum at the minimum area. This is the place we have to design. Okay. Now, here the triangle ABC is the right angled isosceles triangle and uh, T is the throat thickness, SW is the length and LW will be the uh, SW will be the uh, leg uh, or side of the weld and LW is the length of the weld. Okay, and the angle is 45 degree. Now, sine 45 degree is uh, 0 0.707 and uh, this is bd upon bd upon uh, what is that uh, ab okay this sin 45 is bd upon ad okay so bd upon ad that means sin 45 is uh, uh, bd upon yeah if you consider only this uh, uh, triangle okay this 45 degree this is 45 degree okay be, uh, will be opposite side by hypotenuse uh, opposite side is bd and hypotenuse is ab so this is uh, bd is nothing but t ab is nothing but sw so we can we will get this relation thickness of the weld t is equal to 0 0.707 sw that is what is written here okay so the minimum area of the throat of the weld is area of the throat of the weld is throat thickness into length of the weld it is you know it is breaking means it will break in a rectangle uh, the total length is uh, TW and the minimum thickness is T. So, this is the area where it will fail. Okay. And it is failing. Uh, you know, if you see how it will fail, if you are just pulling it, pulling apart, that means the failing is taking place because of the tens tensile force and the tensile stress is induced. Tensile stress is load upon area. See, load upon area, which area? Throat area. So load is P. Load which P? Which load we are talking about? This load, this load, this is P, this is P. Okay, otherwise you know I will show in this diagram. Ah, these are the P's you are seeing. These are P's. Okay. So that P upon area. So P upon area. P upon area is this one. 0 0.707 into SW into LW into sigma uh, LW and now finally you will get the strength of the uh, single transverse fillet weld it is for single thing because only one weld we are considering if you are, it is double then you have to multiply by 2 if this is single and you multiply it by 2 it, if this is 0 .70, uh, 0 0.707 this will, if you multiply by 2 it will be 1.414 so this is single traverse fillet weld uh, you know formula and this is for the double uh, transverse fillet weld formula okay during welding slag and blow holes occur so the weld is weak weaker than the plate normally you know it is weld is weaker than the plate but you know if you are a skillful welder if you find a skillful welder and if you do everything uh, so uh, mm. you know you can get uh, the weld to be more stronger compared to the parent metal mm. Okay, therefore, the weld is provided with some reinforcement which may be taken as 10% of the plate thickness. So, reinforcement is, you know, the, here what is shown. The, the, uh, running. 
reinforcement is this okay so the today will stop here thank you